Hello all, um, in this video I'm going to take apart one of these old surround sound uh, speakers, it's the woofer speaker. Uh, my mate donated me this because he knows I take things apart and uh, I do videos of that. So she was finished with it and she's also gave us a, a big TV as well. Uh, they gave me that a wee while ago, I've just not got around to doing that one, that'll be done in another video, a big 60 inch. It doesn't work like, but again I'll just take them apart and show what's inside it. But for today's video, on this one, I'm going to take this speaker apart, I'll show you. It was just something I always mentioned as well, it was, it's not really much to do with the video, but I got these new floor mats from my car and I was about to throw the old one out and I had it since I bought the car. I don't know, something inside me says I just didn't want to throw it out like that because I had it for so long I just get sentimentally attached to them. Well, that's fair enough. Thing. But regarding the electronic stuff and all that old stuff, I mean, it's a throwaway society. Um, it's sometimes costs more to get them repaired than it would be to replace them. So stuff just gets thrown out. But the, the purpose anyway of this video is I'm gonna, just going to wreck the thing as I take it apart. It's not going to go back together again. And it's just going to be getting chucked in the skip anyway. So, but I've always been interested to see what's inside things like that. And, and it's, this video is put up for those that are like-minded. This is the device here that I'm going to remove. Uh, <coughs> I'm going to take it apart. It's an LG. It's on some woofer. It's specifications. So I'm going to just break into it and see what's in it. The other thing that's totally knackered is the TV here. This is finished. So it was just going to be getting thrown out. It's quite big, but that'll be done for a, a different video. I'll get, I'll open up that for another video. And it really is pretty big. It goes back quite a bit as well for that TV. So that'll be quite an exciting one. Uh, I won't do it on this video. That will be done in a future video. It's JVC you used to make. It doesn't work, it's completely finished and it will be getting thrown out anyway, so I'm going to open it up and see what's inside at a later video. So if you're interested, keep a check on my channel. But for this video, it's going to be about this surround sound speaker. So I'm going to take it out of the box and start taking it apart. So before I was going to put it in the back of the car to take up to the the area where I take them apart, I'm just going to get a quick dust in to get all the stir and dust off it because it's been stored for quite a while. Uh, I had it in the house stored for a wee while, ready to go to the skip. And then, of course, I remembered that I do these videos, so they donated it for, for me to do this. That's got a lot of dust and stir on it, so I'm going to give it a wee wipe down before I load it into the car. And then it sat in my lockup for a wee bit as well. So there's some cobwebs on it that need to come off. Okay, right, so I'm going to figure out how to get this thing opened. So, I've got it out of the box on the pacing table where I, where I do these kind of activities. Plenty of light, natural light, which means there's no light and shadow problems. It doesn't make a mess in the house, and it doesn't disturb others in the house as well. So I'll do it out here at the back is. Um, so I borrowed my dad's toolbox, flat screwdriver, hammer. I think I'm going to hit this off with the hammer, see if we could pry it open. I don't see any other obvious ways to get into it other than just to pry open the front. And it looks like that might be where you would perhaps put something flat, like a flat screwdriver to, uh, to open it up. It looks like it's a press fit. Before I take the front off, I'm taking off this cover, the uh, side speaker cover, to uh, expose the speaker behind it. And that looks as though it is press fitted as well. It is, in fact. It's the doubles there that go into these uh, four holes there. So, the four pegs just press fit into the four holes on the side. Now, the speaker is held in with uh, Phillips screwdriver. I'm going to remove the speaker. It's quite straightforward. This is the Phillips screwdriver. Just Screw these four screws with the Phillips screwdriver. It's quite tight, but it's coming. Because, as I said earlier, this is just going into the skip when it's finished. 
if I need to use a little bit of gentle persuasion, i.e. use the hammer to get into things, then I'll do so. Because it won't be going back together to be used again anyway, so. So it's just a case of uh, <coughs> removing these four Phillips screws. And it's, uh, as I say, this is the side speaker. I haven't took the front off yet. <coughs> and there's the specifications of it. Pictures of that as well, just. So. A bit heavy. Got the magnet on the back. Let's work. Oops, it uses a magnet. Little spare connectors that need to be removed in order to get the speaker out the unit which you just basically pull off so just as I say they just simply as a case of just pulling them off it's just push fit spade connectors and that completely removes the unit the speaker unit quite a size 60 what 8 ohm it's a model number serial number and some other numbers will be up 8 ohms 60 watt and you can see the coil wire at the back of it, which I'll break into that later. Uh, uses a magnetic fuel to adjust the to attract and repel the paper cone, which uh, done at a fast enough frequency will produce the sound note. It vibrates the air, which your ear will pick up, and the code is sound. So I will get into this. In fact, what I found quite interesting. Now I didn't realise this, so I've just learned something here. And sweating buckets by the way because it's really clammy today. It's really warm. Um, I didn't know this. I thought there was actually two speakers in there. There isn't, there's one. I must use a sort of like a baffle box, uh, an acoustic sound reflection method because the speaker, there's only the one which was on the side, but Wait till we see this. Now, I didn't realise this. I've got a strong sound system, but it, it doesn't have the speaker on the side. It just shows the front bit like that, you know, the hole at the front. It's a big sub subwoofer speaker for the bass, the low frequency, basically. Uh, yeah, this is interesting. I didn't realise this. I'll show you now. As I say, I thought there was two speakers. That's the only speaker there is. And I thought there was, like, something behind there. There isn't. You know what it is? Right, this is all. This is all it is. It's a paper. It's like a cone. <laughs> and that's just the hole. That's it. <laughs> I didn't realise that. I really didn't. So the speaker was like such so still. Obviously the, the sound must come out from the back. And it must echo in this echo chamber. In the actual wooden box. And this bit at the bottom. It's Reminds you of the car, car silencer system. There is actually no, that's just the wires for the connectors. See the connector at the back, right? And I thought the wires were going into it, but it's not. That's just what came off the side to connect up to the speaker. But that just goes right out to the other side. Which is basically through there. So, that was surprising to me, <laughs> really was, it really was. So that's something that I learnt. So I'm going to, um, well I don't really think, I can understand why the front wouldn't really come off for any specific reason because there's nothing much behind it. If you were going to service it, it's the speaker, that's the business end of it, that's the only real component that makes the noise and the sound, there's only one speaker and one connector connection wires that come through the back of the box and that's it that cardboard circular tube is really the bit that the front the sound comes out but it must also in this instance comes out through the side as well i don't know how it is on my surround sound but I'm presuming it'll be something similar to that there'll be like a i certainly ain't opening up mine <laughs> because i still use mine but maybe when i well i hope to keep it indefinite but if i ever find another one it's like mine or different I will if I'm able to I'll get a hold of it and take it apart and see what's inside the different ones 
But anyway, I'm going to move. The, I'm going to break the front panel off this anyway. So yeah, like you say, the one I've got doesn't have that. It just looks like that, and it's just solid side. And I don't know what the speaker arrangement would be like inside that. Um, in this instance, the speaker was certainly on the outside with obviously the cover, which you know just fits in with A4. That's just a press fit. These four pegs, one, three, four, just go into these holes. One, two, three, and four. And that basically covers the front of the speaker for itself. Um, as I say, the wire that's the only wire that is, it just simply goes through the back of the box. And then it's been cut because uh, the, the other end would have had a connector that would went into the amplifier to drive the speaker, obviously. But, uh, that was cut when I got the thing. So. Now, to remove the dress panel at the front, I think it's just a case of having to wedge a flat screwdriver. Well, I'm just, it doesn't actually, I don't think it's supposed to come off, but I'm just going to burst it off anyway. Just to give you a sort of feel for, for, a feel for what that sounds like. It's just cardboard. So we could put that on the wider. So it's just like cardboard. Just like where you'd wrap kitchen roll round or something. Feels that way, to me. So what I've been doing is just get hammer going like that. So it's been proven to be a little hard, so I'm going to use a bigger screwdriver. A bit of gentle persuasion. <laughs> I'm going to use this more leverage, more force to get that off. So I've just simply um, pretty much done that and just wrenched it open, and it, it kind of reveals the pegs that hold the front on. No, I can't really film it and do it at the same time. I didn't. I haven't got the chest camera. Mode. You know, I strap the phone to my chest and just free it both my hands. But I don't have that with me at the moment. So I'm just having to show you roughly what I'm doing, and then I'll go and do it and show you the, the next clip with the panel off. So to move the, the panel, once it's come off, it just comes out like such. Then um, it's basically it's not supposed to come off. I don't think. Because it kind of damages it in the process. But there's six pegs, one there, there, there and there, there and there, which will match up with those. It's just basically friction fit. It just push fits in. Fit into there. Now there is a bit of a gasket here that goes in between the plastic panel and the wooden case. This is just so that the, the low frequencies that come out of these subwoofer speakers don't cause the panels to vibrate. So they fit like a felt like gasket between them because it is a sound, or a, basically a sound system and the low pitch frequencies carry more energy to vibrate things around about it. So this being a sound system it needs to be carefully designed and add all this sort of stuff to eliminate any annoying vibrations and resonant frequencies that you don't want. Subwoofer speakers, the low frequencies carry more energy to why vibrate other things around about it. So well, this tube set up here is just simply cardboard like you would see around a roll of wallpaper or something. It's just that's really it. It's just glued on as well. Uh, <laughs> and see that part that gasket case came off there. That was a ceiling gasket. Well not a ceiling gasket but it was just a Kind of like buffer out any vibrations set up. And the cardboard insert was glued in, but I could remove it. Uh, I just tease it. And that's it. And the plastic press panel. Not much really, is there? The wire up the back basically, that just comes through, I could just pull that straight through, straight out the back. As I said, it was cut earlier. <coughs> and these speed connectors just simply go on the speaker like such. So that's it, taken apart. And there's not an awful lot in it to be fair. Subwoofer 
Surround sound speaker. So what I'll do now is I'll get the parts, I'll lay them out on the bench in a nice and orderly fashion. I'll go around the bits, I'll take still photographs of them and once I've done that, I'll break into that speaker. Because when I break into it, it'll, it'll look, it'll, it'll uh, be broken beyond recognition. You wouldn't really recognise it as a speaker because it'll be all torn open to get into it. So, but before I do that, I'll take the pictures all the bits in a nice neat orderly fashion and I'll video past them as well and I'll give you my explanation as to how and what they work and how they do I'm not an electrical engineer I just uh, use my knowledge that I know that's all it is just for entertainment purposes don't quote me on it my dad is he knows a lot about all the electrical stuff but if I get stuck I'll go and ask him but he's busy at the moment so anyway I'll go and do this for you now right so I've took some photographs of all the bits <coughs> so basically there's um that's all the main elements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight main components. Then you've got four screws component, then you've got the wire component, you've got this wee gasket component, that's just a dress chrome trim. It's not really much to, it's just plastic and moulded into plastic, there's no point in taking it off. This cardboard tube component, you've got the main deal, this is the main everything. This is the, so it does all the work. The speaker. This is the main component, basically. Then you've got the dress cover for the speaker that goes over the whole of the side. In this instance, anyway, not in all cases, but certainly in this model. <coughs> and then, of course, you've got the main box, the wooden box. This will probably act as an amplifier, uh, an amplifier, um, a resonating box. You can't produce extra sound from nothing. You can't get energy from nothing. You cannot get energy from nothing, but you could shape and manipulate the sound waves to make it more efficiently produce the note or concentrate the, more, the note more clearer. Just like that of a car headlight, they could seem very bright with all the reflectors and concentrating the, the beam, but it won't be any more energy than the, you know the 60 watts or whatever it is that the bulb will emit. So it's just how you use the energy, how efficiently you use it. Um, well, that's really it. I was in the cellar, by the way, in case you're wondering what... I was just there as to remind me. <laughs> so I had to get these books, I'm going to be looking at them later, in case you ever just put in on the wide shot. Uh, I left them there as a reminder. Um, I like reading up on old, old cars or work and everything. Uh, I used to own an Escort Mark III, by the way. <coughs> that was my first car in 1995. But anyway, that's off subject. Um, so I'm going to break into this speaker and I was just going to bust the cone to get a view of the coils behind it. It's made up of the main body of the speaker, the, the metal case. And you've got the big powerful magnet at the back. It's a magnet there. energy into the electric coil inside there, the energy will be vibrating at the frequency of the sound wave that's been made or produced by the amplifier, or I should say reproduced from the amplifier, because that amplifier reproduces the sound signal that comes into it and just amplifies it with the power of the amplifier, and then it sends that signal to the speaker, and it will <coughs> cause the coil of wire to energise and de-energise, which will pull and attract the magnet and repress the magnet which will vibrate the speaker cone which will produce the sound which will vibrate the air molecules that will reach your ear, vibrate your ear to so you can recognise what sound is so um, I'm going to break into this now I'm just going to get the screwdriver and just uh, take the paper cone off actually, actually I won't I'm not going to destroy the speaker it's just too good to destroy and I don't think there'd be much benefit and doing that. Uh, it's a 60 watt one. I, I think my dad might, he might want it or something, or somebody, I might keep hold of it just now. I, I just feel as though I wouldn't be much point in that. No, I've destroyed speakers before, smaller ones, but you don't see much. No, I've changed your mind, because you're not going to see any more than really that. 
all you would do, all you would see is that. So instead, I'm going to zoom into it for you and just show you a close up of the of the coil behind it. There's no really any point in destroying it. I mean, you're not going to see any more extra. That's, that's the coils for wire there. Anyway, look. that's it there. Look. So all that is, it's just going round the copper wire. It's just going round in the coil like that. Which you could see much clearer now. That's all you would see anyway. There's nothing behind, nothing more behind that paper cone. That's the paper cone there. So all we would be doing is just tearing it and destroying it. Where I might, I'll actually give it to, I'll see if my dad would want it first because he might uh, be interested in keeping, using this for something. So there's nothing really in here. This is metal, there's nothing much behind. That. It's just like a nothing. You could probably get a better view online anyway. So I'm not going to break that one open. I'm going to hold on to it just now. There's nothing really much to see. It's just a speaker. Could, I just feel as I'd be. You know, I feel like I don't want to break it open, so I won't. Change my mind. Yeah, I'm just gonna. Anyway, that's it. <clears throat> I've opened up this anyway and showed you what's inside there. So I'll probably just round off the video now. Um, if you find out that you get a much better, clearer understanding if you just go to Google and see how, how the speaker works. Uh, like I say, you wouldn't see much. Uh, I just had a thought, I just say, my dad might make use of that. It seems like a fairly good speaker. I don't know actually know what was wrong with it, to be honest. Now that's the thing, yeah, she gave us it because she was going to be throwing it into the skip along with lots of other things. And... Um, I presume it was a presume it wasn't working, and there's nothing else inside there other than that speaker. But unless there's a break in the wire in the speaker coils, I don't really know how it could fail. I mean, to be honest, I didn't even know what was inside that box until I opened it up. I thought there might have been other circuitry that could have failed, and that'd be the reason why it was being getting thrown out. But um, mm. yeah, so there is no really any point. There. But you've seen it anyway. That's all there is inside. But I'm going to keep hold of this anyway, um, that's really it, so the video is completed and I'm just going to round it off. <coughs> okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video, to see what else I put up on my channel. Uh, I've got that big TV, the big flat screen TV to take apart, uh, that JVC one, which I'll do in due course. I've got a lot of things to do at the moment, but when I get around to it, I'll do it. And just keep a check on my channel if you like this kind of stuff. And just see what else you put up on my channel. Okay, thanks for watching. See you later on. Okay, bye for now.